Hello, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University. And I'd like to give you a brief update today based upon the reports that we saw released by USDA here within the month of, of March. Now, when we get to this time of year, we're typically looking at two things. One, the size of the South American crop that's being brought in the harvest right now. And two, looking forward to planting prospects for the upcoming crop. And we've got signals on both of those over the past week. So as we look at the, the supply and use table that USDA has right now, they basically made no, no changes to the corn table with the exception of the price down there for 2023. As we're looking at the 2023 column, they kept supplies the same. We're looking at a record crop of 15.3 billion bushels. So we've got plenty of crop to work with. You look down in the gray box in demand, and again, they left all those numbers the same as well. So we see what I'll call good demand, you know, using up about 14 and a half billion bushels, but not quite strong enough to eat up that record supply. And so stocks are building and prices have continued to fall. USDA pulled five cents more out of the season average price, so we're now down to four dollars and seventy-five cents a bushel. So that's off a dollar seventy-five from what we averaged in the 2022 crop. And it's comparable to what we were capturing with the 2020 crop. Now that 475 is a little bit of below production cost for 2023. So looking forward into the 2024 crop, USDA expects a little less corn planting because of those losses, pulling us down to about 91 million acres, but we'd still be looking at a 15 billion bushel corn crop given that. Well, you look down in this, the demand side for 2024 and what USDA shows is demand is growing, but more slowly uh, than the supplies have built up over the past couple of years. And so we continue to see stocks build and prices continuing to erode away a little bit here. Now, when it came to the soybean market, basically USDA made absolutely no changes to the 2023 column. So they maintained what they were saying in February. And that was that we had a pretty good crop coming out of the fields last fall harvesting nearly 4.2 billion bushels of soybeans, not a record crop, but a good sized one. You look down at the demand side for 2023, and we're using just again, a lit, little less than we were able to produce. And that's despite some growth through the biofuel sector, mainly because we've been seeing, uh, let's call it a more challenging time, exporting the, the soybeans that we have. In fact, exports have been the challenge for the past 12 to 18 months across a lot of agriculture. But when you put it all together, USDA maintained their season average price at $12.65 a bushel for 2023. That leaves a little bit of profitability in for soybeans this, this year. And so as we look forward to the 2024 plantings, they expect farmers to increase soybean plantings because of that, looking for around 87 and a half million acres. Given trend line yield, that would lead to a record production in 2024, which means we need really strong demand in the gray box and they do see demand rebounding but again not rebounding fast enough to keep up with those supplies so just as with corn stocks build prices continue to fall now looking at the export situation though you got to look at what is happening with global supplies and what we're seeing there is that we're looking at record world production you know from the 2023 crop and in fact a lot of the focus has been on the south american crop as we look at Argentina and Brazil, they had, you know, in this case, Argentina, Argentina had some struggles last year, but Brazil was popping off some record crops. This year, it looks like Argentina has seen some, a lot of recovery due to the weather conditions improving there, but Brazil has suffered a little bit from weather problems, but we're still looking overall at an increase in production in South America. In fact, as USDA looked at corn this month, they ended up raising the Argentina production by a mil million tons. They did leave the Brazilian production the same though. And one of the things I've been watching is how USDA's estimates line up with some of the private estimates and even with the estimates coming out of Brazil from like their version of USDA. And what we're seeing is the official USDA numbers are higher than what we're seeing, especially out of like CONFAB down there, which is indicating that we may see some pull down in this Brazilian number as we go forward over the next couple of months, if that drought truly had the impact those numbers are showing. But it still leads to the question of there's a lot of corn available worldwide, and that's been part of the struggle as far as us rebuilding our export share. 
When it comes to the soybean market, similar tale again. Record world production in 2023. Again, a rebound in Argentina's production, a little bit of a pullback in Brazil's production. And in fact, as USDA looked at Brazil this month, they did take that soybean number down by a, a million tons. But just as the same as it was with corn, when I look at the official instruments coming out of Brazil versus what USDA has, the Brazilian number is estimated to be below what USDA has here right now. So I think the market is looking to see if we do get some signals over the next month or so that, if you will, how bad the damage is in that Brazilian crop. Right now, USDA is taking what I'll call the more conservative approach and maintaining a higher production number than what private estimates are indicating. So that does lead to some, let's call it challenges when it comes to exporting, because we know there's a lot of potential production coming out of South America, and that has been um, creating some issues as we look to rebuild our, our export sales. Now, the other thing we're watching for, though, is what we're going to plant here in 2024. And as I mentioned, USDA saw a swing of area moving from corn to soybeans. And we are seeing that same sort of indication as we look at some of the private estimates. In this case, Allendale came out earlier this week with their results from an acreage survey that they do each and every year. And what they were finding is they saw a similar shift, but a smaller shift than what USDA is estimating. In the case of USDA, they had USDA had corn losing about 3.6 million acres and soybeans gaining about 4 million. Allendale shows corn losing about 1.2 million acres and beans gaining about 2.2 with the swing here coming from wheat. Both USDA and Allendale expect wheat acres to be down as well, but there are some major differences here. The idea is we're talking to couple million acres here can make a great deal of difference when it comes to the available supplies hitting the marketplace this fall. In fact, as you look at these numbers, then the idea is I'll move forward with Allendale and take them to their implied production numbers. As I compare those to what USDA is currently estimating, right now USDA has corn production falling back a little bit, soybean production ramping up to a record level. Allendale, on the other hand, has a smaller shift and they have corn production actually reaching a record level this coming year and soybean production remaining a bit below that record possibility here. The swings here are about nearly 500 million bushels when it comes to the corn side of the market. On the bean side, you're talking about 150 million bushel swing, but those are big enough gaps in between the two numbers that that will have a major impact on pricing because if I take you back to those first tables, let's think about here in the corn market how there's only about a 300 million bushel difference between you know total usage and production. So that swing of 500 million bushels could collapse that all the way into where we do see stocks starting to go down in 2024 on the corn side if the Allen or if the USDA numbers play out here versus what Allendale says. On the other hand, as we're looking at soybeans, the gap between production and, and usage here is about 100 million bushels. So again, having a, a, a gap here of 150 million bushels is more than enough to cover that difference there. So this will have some major implications. In fact, as you look at pricing here over the last couple of days, um, in you know here in mid-March, as I record this on the 14th, we have seen soybean prices strengthen and corn prices weaken, I think because of the numbers that came out from Allendale here showing, again, relatively more corn and less soybean than what USDA's initial estimates had. And so when we're looking at pricing right now, corn is pricing in that 450 to 460 range, both for old crop and the 2024 new crop as we look out at the futures market. Soybeans, we're pricing, you know, still old crop on an average, capturing about 1244, so a little bit below that 1265, but again, still, you know, a little bit, you know, offering a little bit of profit potential. But as we look deeper into the 2024, the new crop pricing, it's pricing at nearly a dollar below that. Again, I think in this case, the market expectation 
is lining up with what USDA and Allendale showed that we're likely planting more soybeans because we've watched corn prices fall below break even and where soybeans have been holding up a little bit above. In this case, this is represented by that big black line you see at $5 for corn on the left-hand side and $12 for soybeans. Those were our production cost estimates going into the 2023 crop year. And the green and yellow line here shows how that season average price has moved throughout the year. Now, as we look here for the 2024 season, that production cost line has moved down to 460 for corn and 1125 for beans. And actually, over the past week or so, both corn and soybeans have gotten those prices to line up right in that range of production cost as we look out for 2024. So that's a quick update. I will say as we're looking forward here, the big thing we'll be watching now is at the end of the month, USDA will release the prospective plantings report, which will be our first USDA survey of upcoming plantings, along with the grain stocks report, which will give us some indication of what is you know, on the old crop side is still sitting in storage as we looked here at the beginning of March. So those will be good, big things to watch for as far as determining prices as we enter April this time. Well, again, thank you for your time and patience. My name again is Chad Hart, Extension Economist, Iowa State University. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Mm -hmm.